What's up, family? Happy New Year. May God bless you in your 2021 season. So this is New Year's Day 2021, and I'm going to give you something special to bring in the new year. That's right. You can see by the title. Southern Styled Fried Chicken. Oh, ho, ho, ho. You ain't had fried chicken till you had Big Chef Drove's fried chicken. So sit back, relax. Let me start your year off right. Let's cook, family. All right, family, so this is my first video of 2021. This is New Year's Day. I decided to go ahead and fry some chicken up for you folks. And uh, over the last few months, I've been going over different fried chicken recipes. I've tried a, a lot of different methods, but I, can't, I think I came up with something that everybody would be proud of. So let's get into it real quick. I hope you're having a wonderful 2021. Uh, before we get started, don't forget to go to my social media page. That's Yes Chef Creates on Instagram, on, on um, Facebook, and also on Twitter as well. I also am going to be starting my Patreon this year, so look out for that as well. And don't forget to check out the website, www.yeschefcreates.com as well. So I'm rolling up on a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. I will be monetized within the next week. And I just want to take this time as 2021 rolls in to thank everybody who has subscribed to my channel, who has watched my videos and who has left me all types of comments. Just want to thank you and let you know that I appreciate it. Let's push this channel. Let's make it something great. And I can't do it without you folks. So thank you very much. So let's get into this. All right. So we have some chicken, uh, uh, some ch some drumsticks here. Here's all of the seasonings. Here's everything uh, that I'm going to use for the most part. Let's start off with um, what's going to go directly on the chicken. So we have uh, some black pepper, some granulated garlic. We have some granulated onion. We have some smoked paprika. And then if you're new to this channel and you don't know what this is, let me tell you. This is Morton's Seasonal and accent salt. I do 50% Morton's, 50% accent. I put it in a container that I've already used and that's what I use a lot as my base seasoning. So um, here we have some flowers, uh, some flour. This is four cups of flour and I'm gonna try to go through this with you folks to give you some exact measurements so you'll know what I'm doing. So this recipe is gonna call for four cups of all-purpose flour. Um, I have uh, five eggs. Do I need five eggs? Probably not, but that's what I'm using. Now, on this channel, as you know, I always use extra large eggs. Unfortunately, uh, for Christmas, somebody gave me a Target gift card, and Target don't sell extra large eggs. So these are large eggs, uh, and I got five of them. Maybe if they were extra large, I would have used four. Uh, but I have right here two cups of water. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use it all, but we'll see. All right. So now over here are the seasonings that are going to go into the flour uh, itself. And we'll start off with uh, two and a half teaspoons of salt. This is uh, sea salt. And then I have about two uh, tablespoons of regular black pepper, which is uh, this one here. And then here I have one and a half tablespoons of basil. I have one and a half tablespoons of oregano and I have one and a half tablespoon uh, spoons of thyme mixed in here together. OK, now. Right here, I have a half a, uh, a tablespoon of Creole seasoning. This is the non-salt Tony Satchery's Creole seasoning right here. And that's just a half of a tablespoon. And then I have one uh, teaspoon of cayenne 
pepper. OK, you can use whatever type of pepper you have. Now, I'm not trying to make this spicy and no, this is not going to make it spicy, but it's it. But it is going to add an element of flavor to it. If you're new to this channel, uh, we're all about building flavors. We're not about letting one thing overpower the other. OK, so this is fried chicken. We're going to make sure that this fried chicken has layers of flavor. That is a possible thing. Now, we're going to go ahead and season the chicken Again, I'll never tell you how to season your your protein. That's going to be up to you. Uh, you know, some people grew up on different types of seasonings. These are the bases of what I use and the way I season is according to my taste. You have to season according to your taste. You have to learn how to flick that wrist on your own. OK, so let's go ahead and let's get started with with the um, with the seasoning of the of the uh, chicken. So I'll just move these back, come up a little bit closer for you. And the first thing I'm going to start out with, I always start out with my uh, mixture of uh, Morton Season All and Accent. And now the chicken has been washed. Um, I don't think you need to watch me uh, wash chicken. You know, you can you people wash chicken different ways. I get that. Some people turn it into a religious activity. And I get that. I'm not here to judge you on how you wash your chicken or how you don't wash your chicken. That's on you. But mine has been washed. So um, we're going to season both sides of this chicken. And we're going to season it really well. And you'll see. You'll see why we're going to season this so well in a little bit. All right. Uh, then I'll go in with the pepper. Only reason why is because the pepper doesn't bond that well. So I'm going to just put the pepper on there next so then the other seasonings will will coat it all right let's go in with the onion powder and then the garlic powder and if you're used to watching this channel you know i love garlic powder I love garlic period and then we're gonna hit it with some of that good old smoked paprika then we'll just go ahead turn it over and we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side now, one thing I forgot to do, and, and this is critical, you don't have to do this. You can if you want, but you don't have to. So I like to take a um, like a little small paring knife and just kind of get in there next to the bone so the oil can get in there. Now, th this is this is really a pro tip. Now, I'm pretty sure your mom ain't never taught you this, but this is a pro tip. And you ask, why am I doing this? Because as you guys know, I do, you know, I'm a chef, uh, uh, like a, a restaurant from, from uh, and I've, I've owned a couple of restaurants. So we really put an emphasis on presentation, how it looks, how it is, how it comes off to the eye. And so if you don't want that, if you want that golden brown and not that rusty brown color, you want to you want to try to get that oil in there as fast as you can. And you can achieve that by doing this. No, it's not going to dry it out. You're going to put just a couple of slits in each one of them and you're going to go from there. Now, what's going to happen is that chicken is going to cook on the inside a lot faster and it's going to allow you to achieve a golden brown color and that just looks good to the eye okay so we're gonna go ahead and finish season this up and then we'll be back all right family so we have everything all seasoned up ready to go let's just go ahead and put this to the side and let's bring in the flour um, and how we're gonna do this okay all right so, all right, so 
let's go ahead and just get our seasonings off in there. Uh, the salt, the pepper, the oregano, basil, and thyme. Oh, and I have some parsley. I forgot to uh, talk about the parsley as well. This is going to be a tablespoon of parsley. I forgot about that. I looked right over it. And then the Tony Sacheri's no salt Creole seasoning. And then the uh, cayenne pepper. All right. Now, just mix that up in there. Now, at one point, I used to put the paprika into the flour. And there's nothing wrong with that. But to me, it, it, it got the color a little off. It made the color look too dark and too burnt. And, and people, listen, people judge you with their eyes before they even taste your food, believe it or not. Uh, and they'll even let their taste buds be dictated by what they're seeing. That's a, that's a big deal in culinary. So you want to put something on the table or in front of your guest or whoever that is appeasing to their eyes. And so that's why I stopped putting the paprika in here. Okay. Because it made it a, a, a rusty color and I didn't like that. So, um, now here is the pro tip. Now I know some people cook, uh, uh fried chicken with the mustard base. Nothing wrong with that. I've had that. It's really delicious. Um, you know, there's nothing, I'm not saying anything against it. But I do like an egg base and I've always used an egg base. Now, I used to put milk in it. I've even done buttermilk in it. The problem is it makes it too thick. It makes it doesn't give a nice airy crunch. Now, what do I mean by an airy crunch? I'm talking about cornstarch. Cornstarch is going to give this mixture a nice airy uh, f uh a crunch that's going to be uh real light and you're gonna you're gonna be able to get into it when i used to do this egg uh base with milk or buttermilk it just and even with the cornstarch it just did not come out right i feel buttermilk chicken batter is just too thick I, that's just my personal opinion. If that's what you do, that's what you like. Hey, man, all good. You know, I ain't got nothing against you. <laughs> I'm not going to browbeat you. But for me, I, I like a nice airy crunch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one third of a cup of cornstarch. And I'm going to put it in this mixture. Okay. Now. You can add more if you'd like. I do think about a third of a cup is pretty good. And you want to get that off in there. So now look at your look at your uh, your flour mixture. You have all this nice color from the from the dried herbs in there. And and, and that's going to that's going to create a nice flavor. So back to the egg batter. What do you do? What do you do when you know, you've made some egg batter and it's just too thick for you. Well, here's what you do. You're going to go ahead and mix that bad boy on up. And you're going to mix this for a while. You want to break these eggs all the way down. Now, now you see how frothy that is. I've beat these eggs until they've became a little more loose. But here is the pro tip. You got to use water. Now, water is going to prevent your batter from being too thick when it goes into the flour. And that's going to make for a better product, a more lighter a more airy product. This is this is what you do. I stopped using buttermilk and milk. And again, I, I've been going through this for the last past four or five months, trying to figure out the um, a very good recipe for fried chicken. And this is what I came up with. Now, I've already used 
a half of cup on these eggs. So I'll probably go ahead and use the other another half a cup, get it down to a whole cup that we that I've used in these eggs. Now, you see that? Now you you're gonna have this egg is gonna bind, but it's not gonna make a clumpy mess because it's been thinned out with the water. Okay, and that's just cold faucet water out of the uh, out of the sink. Um, so I I have my chicken at room temperature. Always when you're gonna do something like this, whether it's steak or chicken or pork, whatever kind of meats you're gonna do, barbecuing or whatever, get your meats down to room temperature. You don't want to cook cold meat because the outside is going to cook first or faster than the inside. Again, that's going to be an issue. It's going to burn on the outside. It's going to look ugly. And, and you know, people are going to talk about you, man. They're going to say you don't know what you're doing. So uh, let's go ahead and let's start uh, frying this chicken up. All right, family. So let's just go ahead and start putting the chicken off into the egg batter. Now, I know what you're thinking. This seems a little counterproductive. Again, <laughs> I've been going over this for about four or five months trying to figure this out. And this is what I came up with. Now, not all of it is going to come out. OK, but it provides whatever it provides and <laughs> however it works, it came out perfect. So to season it nicely is, is the reason why I did it. You know, I put a lot of seasoning on it because I know some of it is going to come off. But now I have a nicely seasoned egg batter. So as I keep going, you know, that flavor is going to just get in there really, really good. So now um, I usually do this in a bowl with a lid, um, but I'm just going to do it this way. Um, and now one of the things you want to do when you're doing chicken, okay, you want to have enough room in there to get your chicken around into the flour. Now, I know some people squeeze their, um, their flour onto their chicken. I don't think that's necessary unless you're trying to do like a panko breadcrumb type deal where it may come off in the oil but if you have a nice binder on this and your oil is sufficient then you should be fine now another pro tip for you you don't want your oil piping hot because all it's going to do is just burn your first piece okay once that oil gets around 300 to 325 that's fine it doesn't need to be 350 or 375 i'm telling you this um, you know, all of our equipment in the restaurant, we would have on 350 and that's how we would fry everything. You don't need to fry oil, especially at home. Now, another thing I know some people like to fry chicken in, um, in the cast iron skillet with a little bit of, of, of oil in there and then they flip it. I, I've never enjoyed doing that. Um, and I guess it's because I'm a restaurant guy, you know, I enjoy, you know, submerging, uh, the chicken and, you know, covering it as much as I can. And I feel that just allows for it to to fry up more evenly. And again, that's just my thing. So, you know, and, and I know, you know, I, I know I talk a lot, folks, but I didn't start this channel just to run through videos to show you how good I can cook or how cute I am. I started this video because I, I literally want you guys to walk with me through these videos so I can show you you know, the, 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 the little intricate details of, on how to do things. And I want to tell you, give you what I'm thinking when I'm doing certain things and why I'm doing it and, and why I'm, why I'm not doing it. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, I can't, you know, I, I, I would feel bad if I just started doing videos just to do videos, just to show you some type of good meal at the end. OK, so, you know, my videos are always a little longer than the, than the other guys videos, the other people's videos, because I want to take time and, you know, explain it to you. I want to give you context to what I'm doing. I want you to understand why I am why I am doing what I'm doing. OK, so now this oil is almost hot couple of more minutes and it should be ready so when it's ready we will be back uh this oil is where it needs to be as you old school people would know we just flick a little little flour in there 
We don't want it. Now I have this on a medium. I don't want this on hot. Put that on down in there. Put it away from you. You don't, you don't need that incredible overcooking hard fry on this. You know, that stuff is just going to burn your meat. Let me put these few pieces in here. And then I'm going to let it do its thing. Now, when this comes out, this is going to be golden brown. And the other thing is, remember, we uh, poked some holes in this chicken as well. So it's going to get in there and it's going to cook the insides of it just as fast as the outside. And you're going to come out with a beautiful, beautiful product. So uh, once we're ready, I'll let you know how much time it took, though. You know, it may be different for you. Uh, I'm cooking on this um, on this uh, gas um, uh, burner. You may be cooking on electric, uh, so it may take a little longer or even faster for you. But always put it on medium. Don't let it get up to 375. Don't even let it get up to 350 if you can help it. Just put it in there at 300, 325, 315. You should be fine. That's a nice that's a nice fry right there. It's, it's not popping all over the place. You ain't in risk of hurting yourself or burning yourself. This is good. This is how you this is how you do it. All right. So once it's done, we'll be back. So, fam, we're about 10 minutes in and I just wanted to um, give you a little advice when you're frying chicken uh, or whatever you're frying uh, like this. So if this if these were um, the little wingettes it wouldn't be a problem because they're going to fry up so fast. But, you know, these are some thick drumsticks. So you want to continue to move them in the grease. You don't want to uh, do it too rough where you're taking off all your your crunchiness. But you want to kind of keep moving them because even if they're floating, some sides will get um, browner than others. Um, but I just want to give you a preview of of how good this chicken is looking look at that and we're halfway in we're, we're almost done we're, we're 10 minutes in um we're almost done with this chicken and so you know it's not going to come out you know too burnt looking or too red or too brown looking it's going to come out with a nice color on it okay so just wanted to give you that little pro tip on you know just move them around a little bit just don't let them just settle in one spot and forget about them pay attention to your food and take care of it all right all right, family, so we are about done here. Um, as you can see, now let me also um, uh, let you know that once the chicken settled in in the beginning, I did turn the, um, I turned the burner up to like a medium high. Um, just as it started to settle in, I turned it up just a little bit more to achieve a uh, about a 350 degrees um, and but I brought it along slowly and that's going to prevent your your chicken from burning from having these black spots and I'm telling you folks listen to me I know a little something now I know a little something so listen to me okay um, start it off slow start it off at 315 325 start it off slow and then as it settles in Give it, you know, 60 seconds, minute and a half, two minutes to cook. Turn it up to a little medium high, you know, and it don't even have to really be a medium high. Just turn it up a little bit uh, and let it get a little hotter. So now uh, this has one one indication to know that your chicken is done. It starts to float. OK, and it gets quiet. It, it starts to get quiet. It doesn't have that hard burn on it now. When that happens, you want to get this out of there because the longer you keep it in there, it's going to dry it out. OK, and I like juicy fried chicken. Now, I'm going to set this on this wire rack. And and if you want to put it on uh, on paper towel, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, I, I saw a post the other day, some bougie, um, some bougie so-called chef telling black people to stop putting their fried chicken on paper towels all right well 
Whatever, man. You know, he done went to somebody's school and somebody done made him bougie. You know, forgot everything his ancestors taught him, man. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, I don't know what his deal is with it, but we've been putting fried chicken and fried pork chops on paper towels for decades now, and, and, and it's all good. All right, so I'm going to let this cool off. And I'm going to come back with the taste test and the presentation, man. Look at look at this. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. All right, fam. So I took one of these legs. It's still a little hot, but I just can't wait to get into it. Now, I know I haven't done a lot of these uh, taste testings from last year, but today is a new year. We're going to commit to these taste testings, all right? I'm going to let y'all know what it's all about. So I'm going to go in on this. Mm. The crunch and the flavor. Mm. I'm telling you folks, I have perfected this recipe. Y'all heard that? And it's juicy. Flavors all through there. You gotta be out of your mind not to try this. Mm. Oh, I still got a lot of steam coming up. Mm. I have done my ancestors proud. <laughs> so, listen. If I got some grease all over my face, man, don't talk about me in the comments, okay? Please. <laughs> so, folks, I want to thank you. I want to welcome you into 2021. May God bless everything that you are about to do. This year is going to be the best year of your life. And we here at Yes Chef, we're going to the top this year. We're gonna grow this channel. And I appreciate everything that you folks have been doing. You've been subscribing, you've been watching, you've been commenting. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm not monetized yet, but I'm right there. As of January 1st, 2021, I'm, I'm literally just on the brink of hitting the qualifications I need to be monetized. But hey, I think, I think you, I think you're gonna get me through there. I think this family is gonna put me up to where I need to be. So then by the next video, I can say thank you for getting me to monetizations. And with that, we're gonna grow this channel. So as always, folks, I thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And until the next time, until the very next video, come on now, y'all know how it is. Peace. I'm gonna continue getting into this. Thank you so much for watching this video. And don't forget, hit the like button. And if you want to be a part of the Yes Chef family, consider hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget, click the notification bell, and that way you'll stay up to date on all of our latest videos. Also consider becoming a member of my Patreon for up close and behind the scene content. And be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Thank you.